Well, parents are drugging their kids with melatonin to get the little devils to sleep. And this has led to a 530% increase in melatonin poisoning and deaths. Way to go, parents. Since 2012. Uh, now, I get it. Sleep training your babies is super hard. Um, you know, all you want to do, my parents used to say, we love our kids so much, but all we want them to do is sleep. I get that. Uh, but can you skip the hard work of sleep training by drugging them? And is that what parents are doing? Now, melatonin is a hormone that human bodies use to put themselves to sleep. It begins to be made naturally at four months old. That's why you can't sleep train before four months old. Uh, but it has become really popular in the last decade with people who struggled, struggled to sleep because it's marketed as natural. It's natural when you make it. When you buy it in a bottle, it's a synthetic. Um, it used to come from cows. They would just take it from their stomachs. It doesn't anymore. Now it's just made in a farm, uh, in a factory. I'm sorry. Um, it is an $800 million per year industry, and parents are using it in place of proper sleep training. God help us. Take a look at this. This is a study from the Journal of American Medical Association, JAMA Pediatrics. A few things to note here. It points out how melatonin is considered a dietary supplement, so not regulated by the Food and Drug Administration and requires no prescription. You probably know that. You see it at Costco, right? So JAMA surveyed parents to see how often they're giving it to their kids. They found that kids are getting melatonin sometimes daily, as young as one years old. Now, the Epic Times made this graphic from this data, and this is a useful summary of the findings, so I'll show it to you. Look at how many parents admit to have given their kids melatonin regularly and these different age groups. Uh, now, I kind of I kind of get giving it to the little ones because they're a pain in the butt. Um, and then but the teenagers or the tweenagers here, 10 to 13, is kind of interesting because th they should know how to put themselves to sleep. But in fact, most sleep research shows that you have to teach a child to be able to wind themselves down. And that's a skill that can last them their whole life. And if you skip it, it's worse in your teen years. Uh, obviously, maybe these kids have skipped it. Um, you, know, you can always see the kids, too. You can always see... You can always tell like the teens where the parents didn't do it correctly. <laughs> that that sounds judgmental. Well, I, well, you, uh, well, you just said it. I'm saying it again. Like if they didn't get the proper training, then they I'm are. I'm judging who didn't do it, but I'm not judging the outcome of the kids. I am. So, okay, you, you do know, that. <laughs> but you can tell, it's, and it's not like, uh, I don't know. I'm just saying that the, you can tell that there was, it was not practiced at an early age and they were like. It was kind of a wild, it was kind of a wild nighttime yes, routine, yeah. and, the, you know, and that kid is now still wild, you know, like right. we all had friends like that. We all had teenage friends like that. You're like, go to sleep, John. Like what the hell's that wrong with that kid? That just can't do it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why sleepaway camp was such a shock for my kids because they're like, these other kids are just up. They don't know how to put themselves to sleep. They don't know how to wind themselves down. Um, and there they're were certain on their girls, screens. There were certain girls, yeah, with our daughter and they were like, we all, all these girls wanted to go to sleep. And then it's like the chatty, the chatty yeah. Cathy's are over there nonstop. So my kids, when they do that kind of thing, they need earplugs and eye masks because they, <laughs> they, they can't deal there with other people. Um, so where was I? Okay. Um, as a result, more children are being poisoned by melatonin because it is not regulated. So look at this report from the CDC uh, showing that in 2020, melatonin became the most frequently ingested substance among children reported to the National Poison Control Centers. Uh, okay, that's bad, but it is worth noting, this is a tiny bit better, that 95% of those poisonings were unintentional. So even though... How many? 95%. Oh, so only 5%? So, well, okay, the numbers are up of people giving it to their kids. The poisonings, though come from kids accidentally ingesting too much. Now, okay. why, right, right. why Clayton, would a child take too much melatonin? Well, because they look like gummy bears. Yes, And they're like little, sweet, like little sweet bottles of gummy bears. Yeah, uh, they are some raspberry those. flavored. They're like candy. I want to eat those right now. Right, so at least two children have died from overeating these, most likely thinking they're candy. Maybe you think the FDA might want to look into that? Like, maybe it's not a good idea. Well, to and make if earlier that's in the day, for them. <coughs> yeah, go ahead. Well, if earlier in the day, like uh, Julia says in our chat, stop feeding your children so much juice and sugar. 
uh, earlier in the day, and maybe then they'll actually have a better nighttime. But then these things, I think they have sugar in them too. Like they're sweet. They taste sweet. They've got like, I don't know, beet juice, yes. whatever. So it's yeah. sweet. So it's like they're kind of continuing the sweetness. Right. What's more is that it's not regulated. So they tested 25 brands of melatonin that comes over the counter, and they found actual melatonin quantity ranged from 74% to 340% of the labeled quantity. So you can be getting something that's way stronger than you think it is. And then of course, children would be poisoned by that, right? Because clearly that's not safe and it's not regulated by the FDA. Uh, but you know, more parents now saying they need this because their kids have sleep problems. Um, again, because I was, I've always been such so militant about my kids sleep. Um, you know, anytime there was someone who's like, my kid won't sleep. I'm like, you got to be consistent. You got to stay with it. Be strict. But I also was one of those, like, if you don't go to sleep, I will take your favorite doll and rip it. So now you know <laughs> what you're dealing with here. That's why my kids no, go I, to sleep. <laughs> oh, my God. It's always yeah, it's like a crazy situation in there. And I, I, because I, I'll go in and put, like, Eve to bed. She's our seven-year-old. And it's like, okay, ready? All right, kiss you, kiss you. And I just read you a story. And then it's like. But now I want a cup of water. And then I was like, I was just walking out the door, lights off. But, you. but now I need, can I have another cup of water? Can I have this? Can you do it? Oh, my I God. I wanted to tell you about what so-and-so did at so school. You need to go to bed now. Right. I mean, it takes discipline and consistency as a parent. I'm going to give you some tips for this later. But uh, also, it means you have to take their screens away earlier. The same thing we know about ourselves, right? Take a look at this uh, helpful graphic I found is that any type of technology, TV, smartphone, whatever it is, is going to display a blue light and that blue light suppresses melatonin production in the pineal gland. And then you don't have melatonin, so you can't get yourself to sleep. So then this little orange thing here, you take a pill because you've stopped your body from doing it, Clayton, uh, playing a switch late at night, um, and then you can't put yourself to sleep, right? So. Is this an uh, epidemic of kids not being able to sleep or is it caused by something that we can see? And then, oh, we need to turn to the synthetic hormone because we've made it so that our body can't make the real hormone. Now, one thing about melatonin is it's an endocrine disruptor. That means it disrupts the balance of your hormones um, because a hormone, anything you take at synthetic levels and disrupt the equilibrium of your hormones you're going to have undesirable results. And in fact, a 2021 study found that melatonin accelerates puberty in mice. So is that something you want to mess with with your children? Take a look at that um, from 2021. All this to say, you got to sleep train your kids. You can't use drugs. Uh, now, I have been known to give my kids maybe a Benadryl when we change time zones. If we're, um, I had my kids in New York and if we would go back to California to visit my family. I've done that every a time or two, giving them a half a melatonin when we switch time zones to go to sleep, to adjust, but not, not ever for sleep training and never more than once, maybe a year. Um, so, you know, if you're doing this as something that in place of sleep training, that's really dangerous. You gotta read the book. You gotta be consistent. This is, in my opinion, the Holy Grail about sleep for all young children, healthy Whenever sleep had, habits, <clears throat> happy child. We have, we have friends that have childs on children, children on the way. Uh, like they're like, Hey Clayton, what do you, you know, you have three kids, any tips I'm about to have a child. I'm like, you need to read that book. Yeah. That's like the Holy grail book right there. And it really book. prioritizes sleep for the whole family and talks about specifically what they need at every stage of development, um, all the way through teen years. Uh, so, yeah, we can't, this is not the Ozempic of sleep training. You can't, you know, pill yourself out of this. I mean, you can, but you set your child up for a lifelong uh, sleep disturbance. So um, read the book. Let us know what you think of that. <clears throat> yeah. People are in the chat and have a lot of comments about this. A lot of people saying, yeah, blue light's terrible for you. A lot of people are saying, yeah. uh, let's see, Mona DTW says, yeah, drugs are bad. Yes. Um and uh, Storm Farm says CBD is is a lot healthier. Um, and other people are saying, you know, remember the, like Flintstone vitamins? Do they still have Flintstone vitamins? Weren't those things just like full of sugar? Yeah, they were. Um, but yeah, you're getting your you're getting your 
all sorts of vitamins by those uh, by those things. Right. But, uh, one person yeah, I, I, says you are a terrible like, mother. So thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> over, over the course of like three years, I think we made it, uh, my daughter and I made it through about two chapters of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy because I would read it to her every night and I would read it to her like this. Like, so like, nah, 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 and she was out in like five minutes. So literally like over the course of three years, we made it like two, two chapters in. Yeah. You know, it's funny. We had over. That was, that was my drugs. There you go. O over the summer, just as an aside here, while we're just chatting about sleep training, uh, your father was here visiting. Yeah. Uh, and my mother came to visit as well. We had a house full of uh, grandparents. And we learned that, like, your dad has trouble sleeping. And he's, what, in his uh, 60s, late 60s? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and my mom as well, like, early 70s. And I'm like, what? She's like, I don't know. My mind races at night. And my mind races at night. Your dad was like, I can't I can't sleep. I can't sleep. And um, so I said, here's, the, here's what I do. Just take, someone taught me this one time, which is you lay there and just close your eyes. And then you breathe incredibly deeply. Counting to like try to get as high as you can, like count to 50. Uh huh. But each breath in, breath out counts as one. So, like a deep breath in, breath out, that's one, all the way up. And I'm like, you will not get past like 15 or 17 on the list. Like, there's no yes, way. Yes, but both of those test cases you're talking about, the grandparents, they came back the next day and they said, were on their phones. That, that's why. No, they, no, it worked. Right. Both of them were up on their phones, fooling around on something and, and, uh, you Looking know, at blue light. Like, uh, fooling around and fixating on yeah. specific issues probably on the facebook um i'm not naming names of what it, you know but yes both of them i checked my phone and i saw this and that upset me and then i was you know yeah these yeah okay these grandparents on their facebook they got to check in on yes their their uh, words with friends, their words with friends and face right or you know <laughs> like oh i needed to check in at the office well again if that's a you got to take responsibility for you gotta, being off your screen. You got to keep the ki little kids off of TikTok and you got to keep the grandparents off of Facebook. Mm -hmm. <sighs> and you got to keep there. Clayton off of his switch. No, I'm good. No, I'm he's good. not. I'm good. And, uh, and you got to keep Natalie off of Sudoku on her iPhone. I read a Kindle at oh, night. Oh, are you going to lie to people? I don't. Are you going to lie? I do to play people? Sudoku sometimes, but not okay, every night before bed. Okay, the truth comes out. I read truth, actual books and a Kindle out. that doesn't have uh, specifically uh, yes. for that reason. And I do too. All right. Um, See, I'm 100%. I'm uh, sorry, I'm 100% I'm percent PBS Space Time. Like, I love that show. It's like astrophysics nerd stuff, but the guy's got oh. a really soothing voice. So when he gets a new one come out, it's like, like, like usually about once a week, like a new one comes out. I watch it during the daytime. So I get to see the whole thing. And then I go back and watch previous episodes at night. And I just, I don't watch them. I just turn it on and set it, set that it works. on my, you know, next to my bed. And then the guy just, he just talks astrophysics and math and, and I'm out. <laughs> all right. I like it. I like uh, it. Oh. All right. Teresa says, yes, I've fallen asleep with my phone in my hand before. Yeah. yeah I think that's all happened. No, we got to stop that. You shouldn't do it. You really, Clayton did a, a segment when he was still with Fox of some doctor that said like the light in your room is literally like poison for your body. Yeah. Um, like if you've got like little LED lights on little electronics scattered around your room that yeah. cause like ambient light, cover them with like little duct tape or something because it, it like even that light while you're sleeping is disrupting your body, which is crazy. Um, I think it's true. If you've ever slept in like a totally dark room with like blackout shades, you sleep like a baby. Then if you've got a room that has like lights on and plugs thing, you know, with ambient LED lights turned yeah. on and all that stuff, you don't sleep as well. Just it's true. That's it's true. Why my bedroom, I have light blocking curtains and my yeah. bedroom yeah. always it's is dark. It does, I can go in there right now and it's dark. So if I want I, to take a nap, yeah. it's dark. I know. I'm going to last final thought on this. When I lived in New York City, when I worked at Fox News, my first apartment was literally right next to the studio in Times Square. Yeah. <laughs> so no matter what light stuff you had trying to block out windows, it was like it was like Kramer on Seinfeld with the Kenny Rogers chicken roaster sign coming through his window. Like he just it was it was like being on the surface of the sun at three in the morning yeah. with those, those <laughs> lights shining through, those neon lights. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.